I don't know what fucking episode this is. Welcome back, Frill Nation, to another episode of OK Bloomer. I thought I would mix it up a little bit, kind of relax. I know it's been a while since I filmed. I've just been busy with everything else in my life. Everything getting kind of all jumbled up for the beginning of fall and everyone's favorite spoopy season. Super excited. Can't wait for Halloween. Can't wait for the Neant Glass sponsored dinner that I'm attending in Chicago in late October. If I get my shit together in time, I may actually invest in a camcorder and maybe do like a trip report if that's something that you're interested in. If you haven't been able to buy tickets for it, they are already sold out. They did a very limited reservation just because of the ongoing worldwide situation and also because of the restaurant they use. I believe it's the same place as when we went in 2019. So I'm pretty excited for that. Anyway, what I thought would be fun today is to just do something kind of relaxing, kind of zen. As you can tell from the wall behind me, obviously I'm very into decorating my space. I really like to mix it up with different kinds of art. Uh, obviously I have all these brand bags that I have that are framed. Is that an angelic pretty bag in a frame? Which might seem a little silly, but it's just a quick and easy way to kind of get some, some color and some interest up on the walls instead of just having plain blank walls. But one of the things that I've also done is I have painted some pieces which you can see over my shoulders, the little square canvases. I was gifted some mini canvases and some paint pens for Christmas last year from my boyfriend's brother and his girlfriend. I really kind of sat and stewed over what I wanted to do with them. I knew I wanted to do something to decorate this space. I wasn't sure what. So I did end up using them finally. I did four motifs. There were four canvases. I did a head bow, a fan, a teacup that is about to spill, and a parasol. And I had a lot of fun doing them. I did them over the course of like a weekend. The small canvas means that you don't have to worry about covering this huge space. And the control of the paint pens was super nice because it just gave you a little bit cleaner lines. It was still really nice, similar to using a marker, only it was a very thinned down acrylic paint. So you could build it up and sort of get a good sense of opacity. And the colors were really vibrant and unique, so it was kind of tricky. I knew it wasn't gonna be your typical sort of Lolita aesthetic palette. It's a little bit 90s, a little bit modern, and I thought that that would just be really fun to have this juxtaposition of that color palette with the more traditional Lolita aesthetics. So today's video, in short, I have painted a couple more canvases to add. I did a stack of macarons and I also decided to add a hat. So here are the canvases, here they are completed. These were really fun, as you can see they take advantage of a lot of those same vibrant colors. The macarons, I went a little bit back and forth, I considered, you know, maybe just doing one big macaron, but in the end I am pretty happy with how they turned out. The hat, the hat was just fun. It was, originally I was thinking of doing a bonnet. Despite a $20,000 art degree, I can't draw bonnets. So I ended up looking up some references and drawing a hat instead, which I think fits a little better. I only own one bonnet that I've made. I haven't really worn it out yet. I'm still testing the water on those because I, I worry about my face shape. Like, is it too round for bonnets? I don't know. Anyway, let's just cut to the video and I will show you how I made these canvases. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is assemble your ingredients. Here I have my paint pens, my pre-gessoed canvases from Michaels, a pencil for sketching designs, and my matte varnish and a fluffy brush for finishing. You are also gonna need a kneaded eraser. This is a specific type of eraser that's very stretchy and almost like a silly putty. This is great for picking up extra graphite and charcoal marks that might be left behind. Also have a plain white piece of paper laid down on your work surface. So I've got my canvases that I just unwrapped. The one had some smudges on it right out of the wrap. So I just went ahead with my kneaded eraser and kind of tried to clean that up a little bit. If you can't clean it up all the way, that's okay. You can always go back in with some white paint or white gesso after and take care of the rest of that. That seems about as clean as we're gonna get it. So I'm gonna start on the clean canvas first. So first I'm just kind of sketching my idea out to kind of get an idea for how it's all going to look. 
the concept was a stack of macarons. Ended up looking up some reference images on Google. Always look up a reference image. I found the stack I liked, and then I decided to add a fourth macaron, maybe something leaning against the tower I had. What's interesting to note about the shape of macarons is that because they have a slightly domed shape to the cookie part, they don't really lay flat on each other like pancakes. Instead, they are more likely to balance on the high point in their crust. So then I'm just looking up macarons to get an idea of a different, more dynamic angle for leaning against the other cookies. And then again, I'm just going in with my pencil on my scrap paper, just doing a few rough sketches to kind of get a feel for how it was going to look, the shapes I was going for, things like that. It's always important to take your time with art and go ahead and spend a little time, bit of time sketching, get an idea for your perspective, how you're going to do it, and even just to warm up your drawing muscles and sort of help yourself get in the mind frame of sketching out some art and focusing on your craft, because then that'll be less crap you're going to have to erase back off of your canvas. And here we go. So here I am, just starting to fill things in, drawing my loose shapes here. I ended up adding a little bite mark out of one macaron just so it would look like someone took a bite out of it and then put it back down for a photo. Uh, I regretted this later, but you know, that's that's my problem to deal with. If I had known then what I'd known now, I would have probably just gone with one giant macaron. So here I'm getting an idea for some of the flavors, some of the colors I wanted to use to kind of put them together, make sure they harmonized. And now here I'm just sort of tracing in my background now that I'm happy with my main sketch. I decided to go with a chevron pattern in the background using a hem marker, which is a specific ruler meant usually for altering garments. I'm just tracing out my lines so I can get really nice clean chevrons that line up across the background. I'm going back in, tracing out those bite marks a little more, and now I'm using my kneaded eraser and just rocking it back and forth over those graphite lines. You can see how it, well it's picking up a lot of that excess graphite, cleaning it right up so that it'll still be visible for when I'm actually beginning to draw. And here we have a bit of a mistake. Always test your pens, pump your pens on scrap paper, because sometimes you have a little accident. Well, yes, but I'm afraid I prematurely shot my wad on what was supposed to be a dry run, if you will. So now I'm afraid I have something of a mess on my hands. So then we just start tracing in. I had sort of assigned the macarons different flavors that it would sort of just make me think like, what colors would they be? For the bottom macaron, I went with raspberry using this sort of really nice mauve raspberry color and just filling it in. And later I'll figure out that I should have done my black outline first and then gone and filled the color back in. But that's okay, that's that's what art is. You can always go back and take care of your mistakes. The second one was a cookies and cream concept. So that one I went in with the black outline right away, which I realized was probably kind of a smart move to do for the rest of them as well. Here I am just sort of filling in the dots that will form the sort of gray color that is reminiscent of cookies and cream. Here I'm just starting to trace out my bitten macaron. And it's okay if your lines aren't super clean. You can always go back in later as you work on it and redefine those lines. The top flavor I decided to go with uh, vanilla, I believe was the concept flavor for that one. So here I am trying to trace back out those lines of the frosting on the raspberry macaron and it was it was kind of tedious so yeah definitely do your black outlines first and then fill in your color and here i'm just trying to fill in some of the color on the mint i need a little pigment so i pump and i'm afraid i just blew myself <laughs> so yeah but that gave me a little bit of pigment that i needed so just rolled with it and continued coloring 
And so here I'm just kind of carefully tracing over that vanilla frosting with that black marker to just kind of help it pop, give it some definition. Because once I fill in that color, it's going to be hard to see the, the lines defining the frosting versus the cookie. So then I just started filling it in with that blue. And you'll notice some of the blue has picked up some of the black paint and smeared it a little. But that's okay, that's always something that you can clean up later before you seal the piece. Just giving some of those fine details a little bit. And going in with my white paint marker and intentionally smearing those little dots on the cookies and cream one so that it had that sort of soft gray color that is so reminiscent of cookies and cream. So that was very much an intentional choice to kind of have it just kind of smear that pigment all the way around. Always clean your tip as well, especially for white paint. And then going back in with the black marker, you'll notice there's a lot of back and forth in working on this piece. Decided to give the macarons a chance to sort of dry and start filling in that background. So especially when I go back with the black marker, those will be dry and then I can just kind of fill in the outlines for the macarons over where the chevrons cut into the macaron shapes. And I just want to use this really fun vibrant green. I hadn't used it for a background color yet. And I felt, all right, well, you know what? This is time. Give it some pop, give it some visual interest. And don't forget to get your edges as well. At the very edges of the canvas. If you want, you can also just straight up go down the sides of the canvas and straight lines or further chevrons if you need. I didn't do that just because I just didn't want to. I wanted to, to just sit on the surface of the canvases themselves. And if things are a little streaky in areas, that's okay. You can always go back over them with your paint markers and build it up. So I decided to redraw those bite marks. I ended up having a little bit of a leak from the white paint pigment. You can just take a little twist of like some tissue and soak it right up off the canvas and then go back in. I'm just cleaning up some of the areas, some of the graphite and things like that with my white marker here. And now I'm going back in with the black marker and tracing my outlines one more time to kind of go back and give them that nice little pop that they needed. And just filling in the raspberry a little bit more because it was a little bit patchy in spots. Sometimes you get that with some pigments, like especially uh, the sort of mint tone. They just end up a little bit patchy for whatever reason. You see it a lot in nail polish as well. Sometimes you just have to do it in very thin coats and then go back and do it again. Adding some black dots back to my cookies and cream macaron to fill in for sort of the bigger chunks of cookies that you get. I want to let those macarons dry up a little bit. I'm going to set them aside for now and I'm going to get started on the second canvas. This is going to be the hat. So I'm just starting with those nice big round shapes. Get an idea for the, the brim and the crown and how they interact. Going in with my kneaded eraser, knocking back lines if I need to. I did use a reference photo for this as well, just so I could kind of get the angles right. Always use a reference photo if you can. If you're not confident in things, you can always do an outline based on your references. And I'm just going in, I'm knocking back some of that charcoal again. I'm just kind of cleaning up my edges. Now I'm going to add all the fun details, like, like a little feather attached to the brim, and of course some nice little flowers. I think I based the flowers off of, I want to say either morning glories or irises. I can't really remember which, I just know I think I just looked up a picture of colorful flowers on the internet and went, yeah, okay, those, I like those, and sort of sprayed them in a little cluster on the hat. I also decided to add a ribbon but I ended up not liking where I'd originally drawn it. So I'm, I just knock that back in a bit and move it so that it's under the flowers. So that way I don't have to deal with trying to draw a knot in the ribbon. Now here I'm doing a pinstripe background. So again, using that hem marker and adding little lines at one eighth of an inch all across the canvas. 
and then connecting them. And these I'm going to color in with that mint color that leaked a little bit because I haven't used that for background yet. But first we're going to use our kneaded eraser again and we're going to knock back a lot of those darker lines so that we have less chance of them showing through through the paint. And here I am just starting to outline everything with my black marker first. And you'll see this hat is going to go a lot faster than the macaron picture did. And it's going to be a lot more decisive just because I've kind of warmed myself up a little bit more. I have a better idea of what I'm doing. And I have a more defined shape, more defined concept. Just outlining those flowers so I know where to color in for those. I have some definition. And that's another thing I really like about these paint pens is that you can work in such very fine detail with them and it gives you a lot of control over that paint so that you don't end up smearing it everywhere. So these are really nice. If you if you like paint but you're not confident in working with it in fine areas and you don't want to deal with brushes and things, pick up some paint pens. Give them a try. So these are really nice. I think they got them at Target or something like that. So. Here I'm just starting to fill in the background a little bit. I'm just kind of going right down the line in those stripes. And again, just like anything else, you can always go back and kind of fix them back up. Do some touch-up work, which these will need some touch-up work, of course. And this is why I start on one side. Always start on one side when coloring in a background, especially one like this. And then work your way across the canvas so that you don't lose track and end up coloring in the wrong stripes. With the pinstripe background just about finished, just removing that mint pigment up and down. All right, and now we're gonna start coloring in the hat. I'm gonna use that brilliant green color that I used for the chevrons on the macaron piece. And just go in real careful, adding in tiny little dots of color around those flowers before filling it in the rest of the way. just using that nice flat edge of the chisel tip to really fill in the larger areas of color and then using the point of the chisel just kind of fit into these details and if you go over that black paint a little bit again that's okay you can always go back in and touch it back up finishing the crown of the hat here and then I'm going to let the main body of the hat dry up a little bit and I'll start working on some of the details. The flowers, I gave them a pink center. I didn't have a good yellow color in the pack and the morning glories or whatever they were had a brilliant pink center. So I wanted to maintain that look. I did that first before the main color of the flower so that when I go back into the flower, I don't have to compete with the darker color to get that pink to pop. The ribbon I just filled in with white. Here I am just filling in that dark color on the flowers and you can see I'm not quite going all the way to the center where that pink pigment is because I don't want to occlude it entirely. I want to leave it still visually visible. And then just going back over it with that pink marker again. Doing some of my touch-ups with my black marker. And you can see right away how much more it pops the second you start tracing those lines and those details. And then building the detail back up in the feathers, building the detail back up in the flowers using the point of the chisel tip.
And now I'm going to start filling in the feather with that sort of vanilla sky blue color. You can see again it's kind of leaching at some of the black pigment, but again that's okay. You can always go back, touch it up. These also dried really fast too, like they had a pretty quick dry time depending on how thickly you laid the paint down, so that was nice. Adding some little fine details to the feather, and then doing a little bit of cleanup in between the stripes, knocking down any stray bits of graphite that might be visible, and just smoothing some of those lines back out where they might be a little bit too wide or too narrow. And then just adding a little bit of color at the end of each pinstripe to continue it around the edge of the canvas. And that's that. That is the hat. So we're all done there. And I'm going to go back to the macarons. For some reason, I thought that they needed a bit of a light detail which macarons are generally a matte finish cookie, not a shiny cookie. But, you know, I wasn't going to let reality stop me from making a creative decision, I guess, so I chose to do that instead. It ended up fine. And you can see I'm still dealing with drawing in the bite on the mint cookie, but I was letting that paint dry up a little bit first. And then here I'm just going in with plain white acrylic paint and a toothpick and just kind of giving some of those shiny spots a little bit richer definition. I just wasn't quite happy with the depth I wasn't getting on the pen. You can see that paint is still very wet, but I ended up redrawing that bite mark. It's fine. I'm fine. This is fine. It turned out fine. And then I'm just going back in, filling back in some of that detail, and I decided that it was done. And if I kept touching it, I was going to lose my mind. So that is that. You are going to want to give your projects at least 24 hours to dry to make sure they're dry completely before you go on to varnish them. So I'm going to show you how I did that with the hat real quick and easy. Threw it down on my work surface. I put the matte varnish right on the canvas. You want to move your brush both horizontally and vertically so that you can be sure to not have visible brush strokes across your canvas. And don't forget to do the outside edges of the canvas as well. And there you are. Two cute little art pieces that you can now use to decorate your sewing space, your Lolita corner, or wherever you want to put them. So that's our video today. If you want to paint along, please do so. If you have your own ideas for mini canvases or if you just want to do one giant canvas, decorate it with all these motifs, I highly encourage you to do so. I find for me personally, art is a sort of stress relief. It's just something I do that's really zen. It lets me kind of focus and sort of just clear my mind and just create something without having to worry about perfection or anything else because it's just for me. And at the end of the day, honestly, if you're not happy with a piece, you can take some plain white gesso, recover the canvas, let it dry, and you can try again. Please create some art. Do something kind for yourself today. It doesn't have to be another Mona Lisa painting. It can just be something fun and cute for yourself. I highly encourage it. If you got something out of this video, please like and subscribe. If you've drawn something or if you take drawing commissions, etc., please let me know in the comments below. I always like to add more art with how things have been affected in the year 2020 with so many conventions being shut down. I do want to try and put more out there towards small artists via commissions or just ordering items you may already have up in your shops. Did you draw anything? Have you used paint pens before? I, I really like them. I used to hate painting and then I took a painting course in college with oils and that was when it kind of clicked for me. The cheap acrylic paints sometimes aren't as satisfying and watercolor, like 
get the fuck out. I hate watercolor. It's just, it's too messy. I can't control it. But oils gives me just that right amount of control. But these acrylic pens, I enjoyed them. I thought they were great. They were the perfect blend of a marker and paint to kind of give me that buildability, that control, but still help cover a huge distance without worrying about the ink fading or drying out over time. Again, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, concerns, please post them down below. Do you want to see me get back to the original intent of this uh, YouTube series, which was the history of Lolita fashion as a whole? Please let me know your thoughts. I'm always happy to hear from people. I do try to respond to comments when I think I have something insightful to respond with, but I do read them and I appreciate your time. Please continue to stay safe. Please wash your hands. Get vaccinated for the love of God if you can. Stay safe. Have a great rest of your day. And we are just waiting to get to. I'm gonna get the video. Oh, for fuck's sake, why did I talk so much?